Greetings, dear listeners, to another episode at the Lily Lectures where we go through various chapters of my book, Christian Astrology in Plain English. I am your guide, William Lilly, and today we are looking into what may get in the way of the outcomes we seek. It's a delicate dance of planetary bodies and earthly endeavors, and it all begins with identifying the obstructive planets. In all inquiries, it's crucial to determine which planet acts as an obstacle or hindrance to the matter under consideration. This obstructing planet is aptly termed a strong, hurtful, destroyer, or abscissa, because it exclusively disrupts and distorts the nature of the question, preventing it from reaching a favorable conclusion. To ascertain this, one must examine the planet with which the Lord of the Ascendant is in conjunction or the significator of the thing asked about. This includes an evaluation of the moon, whether she is the significator herself or shares in the significance of the query. In resolving this, you must also consider the planet to which the significator of the querent or the significator of the thing required is joined, or the moon, and observe how this planet is disposed and to whom it is joined. If the Lord of the Ascendant or moon, or significator of the matter asked about, is joined to an evil planet, evil disposed, without reception, or if he is not ill-disposed but joined to an infortune, and he is also ill-disposed and doesn't receive him, it prevents the destruction of the thing quesited. A planet is regarded as ill-disposed when it is peregrine, retrograde, combust, cadent, or positioned at a significant distance from the ascendant or the house relevant to the matter in question, hindering its influence on the house or its lord. In such cases, the aspect to the house is more important than the aspect to its lord, so any planet in fall or detriment can be called a destroyer or obstructor or impeding planet. Additionally, if the significator of the querent, the thing sought after, or the moon, or a planet to which she is joined, and whether she is significator or is participating in the question, is joined to an unfortunate planet that is retrograde, combust, or cadent, then the presence of reception should be observed. If reception exists, it suggests that the matter will ultimately succeed, albeit with some difficulty and considerable effort. If there is no reception, the matter will ultimately fail, even if there initially appeared to be a high probability of success. If the planet that receives the Lord of the Ascendant, the Moon, or the Lord of the Matter in question is free from negative influences and is neither receiving nor received by malevolent planets, it indicates that the matter will be easily accomplished. If the planet to which the Lord of the Ascendant, the Moon, or the lord of the sought-after matter, is free from infortunes and is joined to any benevolent planet who is in aspect with a malevolent and is impeded and not receiving the former planet, it shows the matter will not be brought to perfection or reach a successful conclusion. It's important to consider the aspects between planets and whether they involve reception. When reception is present, matters can progress though they may come with some challenges. You should also consider whether any planet obstructs the light and virtue of the significators before their complete conjunction with an evil planet. If such an obstruction occurs, it does not prevent the matter from being perfected and accomplished. However, if there is no obstruction that diminishes the malevolence of the unfortunate planet, the matter is prohibited and will not be affected. Additionally, when evaluating receptions, you must judge whether the reception occurs via a square or opposition aspect. In such cases, if a planet is ill-disposed, the reception is less likely to be beneficial. Reception through a sextile or trine aspect, especially when the receiving planet is in a good state, indicates that the matter will be accomplished. The nature of the aspect, be it square, opposition, trine, or sextile is relevant, provided that it is not separated but applying. 
If the significator is linked to a fortune and not obstructed, the matter will indeed be perfected. In cases where any planet serves as a translator of light or virtue between two significators, and the receiving planet is an infortune and obstructed, it hinders the question or matter unless the infortune is received. If the significator of the querent or the moon, and the significator of the sought-after matter, are connected to a planet that gathers the influence of both significators, whether that planet is an infortune or unfortunate, it destroys the matter and prevents its completion unless that planet receives both significators. If it only receives one of them, it will not be performed. You must also consider whether the significator of the querent is positioned in the house related to the desired matter or is approaching a conjunction with its lord. This suggests that the querent is moving closer to obtaining the desired matter. If the significator of the thing demanded is found in the ascendant or is nearing a conjunction with the significator of the querent, it indicates that the matter being inquired about or desired will come to the querent, regardless of receptions. The moon and other aspects should also be examined in their natural state. So, my dear listeners, as you gaze upon the night sky, remember that the movements of the planets can profoundly affect the outcomes of our earthly pursuits. But through careful observation and astrological wisdom, we may yet decipher the cosmic riddles that stand in the way of our desires. This concludes today's episode of the Lily Lectures. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and until next time, may the stars shine favorably upon your path. I am William Lilly, and this is Christian Astrology.